Hey guys, how's everybody going? So, this week's project is Annie Sloan chalk paint. Um, bit of a furniture makeover in the Empress Silk. It's got a clear and a dark wax on it. Now, this is the first time I have ever used this paint. And initially I was very apprehensive because it is expensive. I live in New Zealand, there is only one shop in the sort of Christchurch area that sells it. It's out in Rangiora. Um, I'll put the name of it up here because it's in a French, French name. Because <laughs> it's in a French name. Because it's in French and um, I don't want to muck it up. This side here which is 946 millilitres, which is 32 fluid ounces. This size is 69 New Zealand dollars. But this coffee table, it barely, barely touched the sides. Like it literally barely touched the sides. This size here is the test pot. Uh, this is in the Florence. I did another project, uh, an old retro school desk in this paint. This has a little bit left, like, uh, this is 118 milliliters and this is $25 and I probably have ooh, 25 mils left so that's 4 fluid ounces so I probably have like 2 thirds of an ounce left of this and um, I just don't think this size would be quite enough to do this. You will also need if you want this finish a dark wax and a light wax. I'm super in love with this, so if you want to see how we achieve this, stick around. Right, so crack it open and just start popping it on there. I'm just using a cheap paintbrush from Bunnings, I think it was about $7, and I am just literally slapping it on. I did see one woman and she did like a crosshatch technique, but I forgot. I literally forgot and I just slapped it on and the reason I'm being a little bit more careful around the edges there is because I don't want to get it on the wall. Um, next I took my paintbrush and put it in a glad bag and put it in the fridge because Pinterest told me I could do that and it did keep my brush good so I could use it for the second coat and all I'm doing with the second coat is just slapping it on again. Honestly this is the like the easiest paint I've ever used. There's no prep work. All I did was wash the table in some soapy water and leave it to dry and every coat I left to dry for half an hour or until it was like dry to the touch. Yeah so it's really simple. You can see literally all I'm doing is slapping it on. There's no rhyme, no reason because it's all about creating the texture in the paint. So if it's a little bit thinner in some areas or a little bit thicker, it's all good. Um, right, next we are sanding. Now it goes against every like, oh, every grain of my being to paint something really nice and pretty and then just sand the crap out of it. But it works. It honestly works, it is simple and it is amazing how much it actually transforms the item by sanding it. Um, yet again I've read or watched videos and people sand it after the wax. I sanded it before the wax, it seemed to make more sense to me, like why would I want to gunk up my sandpaper with wax? Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. The only real advice I can offer you for this, because it was the first time I was doing it, um, just sand it in the places it would normally get knocked, and with the top, make sure you're going in the direction of the grain. Like, you want it to look scratched somewhat, because you're distressing it, but you don't want to look like, I don't know, some kids just kind of gone along and made a mess of your table. <laughs> Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm going to show you quite a lot of the sanding and when I say a lot I mean probably another like 20 seconds of it because I really 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 got into it. Initially I was just like ah but then I really got into the sanding and once you could actually see the piece evolving it was just like oh, okay I'm a lot more comfortable with this. Now we have the clear wax. Um, yet again, follow the grain of the wood and do not be stingy with it. Um, I'm just using a towel I wrapped up. I'm not sure if I just previously said about the paintbrushes. The Annie Sloan paintbrushes here start from $49 and then I think the big one's like $70. I can't justify that. I'm sorry. I just can't. 
Now the good thing is if you make a mistake with like the sanding and you don't like a particular area, you can just paint over it and sand it again. Like that's how amazing it is. But just, oh my God, just have fun with this. Just have fun and get on in there. So as you can see, I'm still just waxing it up with the clear wax. I'm really quite happy with the leads. You can kind of see them coming to life and you can see the, the texture of the paint change. And I know everyone who talks about it keeps on waffling on about, oh, it's got such a nice velvety finish. It's the only way to describe it. It is such a nice finish and it is really durable, surprisingly enough. I'll tell you a story at the end of the video about how durable it is and I was just about to cry with what happened my mother-in-law put a glass like directly on it and I was just like ah it's gonna leave rings but I'll tell you that story at the end <laughs> I get very easily sidetracked right now we are moving on to the dark wax this is the first time yet again I've used any of this product and people seem to be really afraid of the dark wax but I wanted it to have that real aged look so just get on in there like as long as you follow the grain of the wood and go in a back and forth motion as opposed to circles because circles don't look naturally aged do they like you know when you see a car that's been buffed and it's got all the circles and it just looks wrong you just need to follow the grain of the wood and anywhere you sort of want it darker just slap on some extra dark wax I I'm in love with the dark wax like yeah just oh it's amazing the lady at the store was like you need to have the clear wax you can't have the, you can't just do the dark wax or make it look muddy and I was trying to explain to her that I wanted it dirty looking but I kind of got a bit scared so I ended up with the clear and the dark wax but I'm really happy about how it turned out God, I know how to blab all, don't I? <laughs> Hopefully this is actually making some sense to you guys. Hopefully just watching it, you can see what I'm doing. And what I'm doing now is just filling in any little crevices to make them extra dark. Right guys, so what do you think of that? As I said, try to compile everything down as quickly as I possibly could. Right, so the quick story is, I finished this on the 23rd of December. And I was like, oh cool, the mother-in-law's coming over on Christmas Eve, you know, make the lounge look a little bit more nice. And I was trying to be real chill and real like, oh yeah, it's cool. So I was like, yeah, let's just put glasses and the plates and everything on and it'll be fine. And I'd given my mother a icy, icy cold drink with ice in it and it went straight on the table and then I picked it up and they were like, two big rings on the table and I was just like oh my god oh my god this is the worst thing ever and then I realized I could just paint over it if you know it did leave rings but the rings disappeared like the rings disappeared it's freaking amazing so uh, let me breathe it let me breathe a sigh of relief that this is actually really freaking durable. I am so in love with this paint. And the next project after this, which I will also be doing in the Empress Silk, will be the set of drawers out of my bedroom. So if you want to see that, just stick around for a later video. But anyway guys, I don't want to hold you up. So as per usual, I am the former Miss M and I wish I was a rich girl. Bye!